catalysts, expanding our understanding of how enzymes work, sparking new scientific approaches, inspiring others to stretch further. Longtime friends Joanne Stubby and Chris Walsh have not only spent their careers studying the enzymes that make life possible, they are catalysts themselves. Dr. Stubby is known for tackling difficult problems and fearlessly wielding a wide array of tools and techniques to map how key reactions work. Much of her research has focused on the critical RNA-DNA interface. Dr. Walsh explores questions where chemistry, biology, and medicine overlap. He uses chemical tools to solve biological issues. He has spurred a revolution in natural product biosynthesis. For their contributions to life as creative researchers, inspired educators, and catalysts for science, the Welch Foundation honors Joanne Stubby and Christopher T. Walsh with the 2010 Welch Award in Chemistry. Named after Houston oil man and philanthropist Robert Alonzo Welch, this award recognizes chemists whose dedication to basic research contributes to the betterment of humankind. Tonight we celebrate the achievements of two scientists who have broken new chemical ground in explaining the catalysts that transform the organic molecules of life. I just really like science. That's what drives me. I like learning about new stuff. Um, it drives me crazy when I can't figure something out. I'm walking around and walking around and it just won't get out of my head. I can't sleep, I can't whatever. It's just to me, it's always been all consuming and figure things out she has. Perhaps her biggest contribution involves a key class of enzymes called ribonucleotide reductases. Dr. Stubby discovered the mechanisms by which these enzymes use free radical chemistry to catalyze the conversion of RNA building blocks to DNA building blocks, essential to make and repair DNA. I've worked on four different kinds of problems for 35 or 40 years and so it, it's not the same problem the problem keeps changing the technology keeps changing you can ask different kinds of questions uh, I started out really as pretty much a hardcore physical organic chemist and I changed over my career into bio inorganic chemistry and bio physical chemistry and even now more and more biological because that's where the problems have driven me her other research focuses on understanding the free radical mechanisms of the bleomycins, natural products used to treat some cancers, explaining how metal clusters in cells are biosynthesized and function in enzymatic reactions, and detailing bacteria's biosynthesis of biodegradable plastics. It is her willingness to employ tools and techniques from a broad range of disciplines that has fueled her work. Dr. Stubby regularly takes sabbaticals in others' labs to immerse herself in new areas. One such colleague is Steve Lippard, who points to what makes her successful. I would say her fearlessness, her high regard for truth and accuracy in experimentation, and um, her ability to pursue a problem using whatever methods she either has in her own laboratory as well as to reach out to um, talented collaborators. The oldest of four, Dr. Stubby is particularly close to her sister Jennifer, an award-winning grade school teacher, and is a caring aunt to her four nieces and nephews. Well, she was four years older than I was, so I was always following behind in her footsteps, and she loved nature and she'd make us play school. She's thorough, she thinks a lot, she is hardworking, she's married to her lab. She makes other people work hard as well and has sets a high standard. It was Jennifer's family who gave Dr. Stubby her closest companion, Enzyme, or Zymie for short. The National Medal of Science winner says Zymie is better known on campus than she is. An athlete most of her life, Dr. Stubby enjoyed backpacking, tennis, and running. She loves to read, murder mysteries are her guilty pleasure, and finds relaxation in her gardens, 
both at home and at her second dream home in Maine. But most of the time, she works. She just loves science. There are very, very few people who really eat and live and breathe science the way that Joanne does. And I think her great desire to know, to get to the very core details of that work is, is what's so amazing. She also evaluates science very critically. She's always thinking, well, that's an interesting result, but how do you really know that result is true? And this is partly what makes her such an amazing teacher because she teaches other people how to do this as well. I'm a teacher and what I do that's most important is educating people. And the number of kids I hit per year, if I, if I teach 150 kids and there are two in the class that go on to do something earth shaking, then I've had much more of an impact than anything I'm ever gonna do in my own research lab. Dr. Stubby says that good science is 99% failure. Part of the challenge is keeping her students and her own morale high. When I get depressed, I can go read somebody's exciting paper in the literature and be on a high for, for two or three weeks, okay? That's what gets me inspired. There's just nothing like making a discovery. There's just nothing that exhilarating. And do I still really like science? Yes. Throughout the years, I would say whenever each of us wanted to find out, find a person to, who would listen to our exciting science one-on-one, -on -one, I would seek out Joanne, or Joanne would seek out me. So we do the same kind of science, we approach it from very different positions. I've been always fascinated with biology and its intersection on, with medicine, but I think morning, noon, and night as a chemist, I'm really about the molecules of life. Or put another way, what chemistry goes on in living organisms and what are the catalysts that control all those chemical changes? Beginning his research career studying enzyme inhibitors for therapeutic purposes, Dr. Walsh began carving out a career that hasn't been limited by traditional boundaries. Offered a position in the chemistry department at MIT, his dream job, Dr. Walsh turned it down, holding out for a joint appointment in chemistry and biology. He got it. I became particularly adept at prospecting for new chemical reactions in living organisms. So I think my aha moments are realizing this may be the first time anyone has seen this chemical transformation in a living system. One of his breakthrough findings was detailing how patients developed resistance to the antibiotic vancomycin and exploring how to develop alternatives that would be more effective. After 15 years at MIT, including five as department chair, where one of his last acts was recruiting Joanne Stubby, Dr. Walsh accepted an appointment at Harvard Medical School. At Harvard, he combined the departments of biological chemistry and pharmacology and later spent four years as president and CEO of the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. He also has worked with many biotech startups over the years to feed his interest in translational medicine. Through it all, he has remained a passionate and prolific writer. His work includes 750 papers and three books. He does things faster than anybody I know. He sees problems faster. Um, he sees solutions faster, and it's all organized in his mind in an impressive way. And it's elegant. He inspired me because he's just a phenomenal scientist, but he is also a phenomenal human being. Dr. Walsh recruited Suzanne Walker and her husband, Dan Kahn, his longtime collaborator from Princeton. It is very frightening to learn with Chris because he learns very quickly and he comes ready to play, so you have to be prepared. He's very serious and he brings a lot of intensity to the collaboration and sort of expects that everyone who's going to work with him brings that same level of focus to the work. A Boston native, Dr. Walsh met his wife, Diana Chapman Walsh, while attending Harvard. Both have built very successful careers in education. 
with Diana working in public health policy and serving 14 years as president of Wellesley College. They have one daughter, Allison, an oncologist and researcher at Stanford Medical School, and a grandson, age two, Sean Kurian. We both always have celebrated the other's opportunities and successes and supported each other. I think we're both very clear that neither one of us would have achieved the things we achieved without the context of this marriage, that there, there was something magical in the, in the marriage that we had with each other that gave us both roots and wings, to use the cliche. Dr. Walsh is an avid golfer whose goal is to play on the world's top 100 courses. Together, the Walshes enjoy travel, food and friends, collecting modern glass, reading, and their house on the Cape. Dr. Walsh says he has worked with many outstanding collaborators and students over the years. My goal is to be a catalytic, have a very light touch, uh, but to enjoy the incredible excitement of working with the best people in the world. His current focus is on figuring out the rules for how some of the most interesting therapeutic classes of natural products are made and looking for ways to make them more efficiently. So I've always been interested in using chemical thinking to improve health. So I'm very much a chemist in love with biology and medicine. Analytic, never taking anything for granted, always challenging and dissecting results in search of true insights. Prolific, eager to learn more, contribute more, and push the frontiers of knowledge. Catalytic, driving science in new directions and gaining some of their deepest joy by teaching and inspiring others for their invaluable contributions to enzyme reaction mechanisms. Please join us in saluting Joanne Stubby and Christopher T. Walsh, the 2010 recipients of the Welch Award in Chemistry.